A degree or certificate from a community college can be the gateway to a life of possibilities. Kasumnas River College is one of our region's community colleges, serving more than 14,000 students yearly. Here to talk about the evolving role of community colleges is the president of Kasumnas River College, Dr. Edward Bush. He joins me next on Studio Sacramento. At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. What is the most common misperception of the community college system in the minds of the public? Yeah, uh, good question. And I, oftentimes, I think particularly uh, students in high school tend to think that community college is just an extension of high school. That is the place that you go to if you were not successful in high school. Indeed, there's a particular role that the community college serves. But in fact, there's so much different opportunities that the community college system provides that no matter if a student is excelling in high school, there is a space and a spot for them. Or if, if indeed the student is struggling, we also serve that purpose. But I think there's a misconception that the community college is not a real college, that in some way that a student is getting uh, less of an education when they come to a community college, when in fact, uh, the community college classes, the college level courses, are the same type of classes a student would take if they go to Sacramento State or UC Berkeley or UC Davis, that it truly is the first two years of post-secondary education, that an English course, a freshman composition at Kasumnas River College, for example, is the same as a freshman composition course at UC Davis. And somehow, I think because of you know, TV shows or, or comedy acts that people believe that the community college is not a real college, and that is definitely a misconception, is not, not accurate, that we have a highly qualified, you know, faculty um, that are able and would be able to teach at any university in, in the country, but they're teaching at the community college system. Well, isn't it also the case that in California, the greatest cross-section of diversity in our higher educational system happens at the community college yeah, level. Ab absolutely, I mean, look at on Kasumnas River College, for, for instance, um, we're somewhere, depending on the year, from the seventh to the ninth most diverse community college in, in the nation. Really? Yes, California community colleges in general in comparison to the University of California and the Cal State University system are much more than likely to educate students of color. Uh, for instance, when you look at the number of African Americans who are enrolled in all of California post-secondary education, um, close to 70% are enrolled in the California community colleges. Close to 70% of Hispanic Latino population are enrolled in the California community college system. So we educate really a diverse um, citizens, but it's reflective of the diversity that exists within the state of California, that you will find that representative populations within the community college system. And, and one of the other things that I don't think is commonly known is how many people from all walks of life that we recognize as leaders have come through the community college system. Uh, I, I'm a graduate yes. of your institution. I like the orange tie, by the way. Uh, uh, yes, I was, representing for that's CRC. Right. I appreciate that. And but but others recently at a uh, honors banquet mm -hmm. the, that Los Rios, the community college district that CRC resides within, as a matter of fact, the Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court is a graduate of our local community college system. Yes, there's many success stories. I mean, volumes of books could be written on the success that many of the students that attended community colleges have have achieved. As I reflect on my 17 years of the community college system and I think about the students that I encounter and many of which I'm able to still stay in contact with and I see what they have been able to do in life as a result of coming to the community college system. Uh, I just received an email from one of my students 
who just completed his PhD in education from University of California, Santa Barbara. Now he's looking to be a full-time professor really? in, University of Calif in the University of California system. Uh, student three years ago contacted me, just finished his master's degree in social work for the University of, of Hawaii. Um, and these are the names and stories you might not ever hear, right? They're, they're not big names, but their trajectory of their lives have changed and completely different as a result of being able to come through the community. Well, I, I can attest to sir, that certainly was my case. It, um, about a year ago, Tom Hanks yes. wrote a op-ed in the New York Times, and he's a graduate of not a local, he's a former Sacramento, right. but he had gone to community college yeah, Chabot, up in the Bay Area, Chabot. Yes, I believe. And uh, he, he made a statement in, in that op-ed where he said he was driving past uh, Chabot with his kids and he said that place is where it is that I became who who I well, am today. Testimony. Yeah, it was a very powerful testimony. But we don't tend to think of community college often enough in that way. And and I'm wondering today what is what's the message that you and other leaders in the community college system want the public to know? I really view community colleges, and I think this is a perspective that, that many would, would attest to as well, as opportunity centers. Our students come to us um, with a wide array of goals and objectives. Some want to transfer, you know, others might want to just take one or two classes in order to get promoted on their jobs. Some are looking for short-term certificates, but the one thing that all of our students have in common is that they want to improve their lives, and they see the community college as the place of opportunity to be able to do that. Um, it is truly a transformative institution. Um, you know, we talk about other institutions in our society playing a pivotal role in the lives of the populations that they would serve. But the community college is truly a place where students are able to transform who they are. That the things that they thought was possible becomes a reality because they could see a pathway to allow those things to happen, to come true. And so I think the public really needs to view the community college as the opportunity centers that exist in their neighborhoods, that exist in their, their communities. And for, for those who are seeking to improve their life circumstances, who either may never been to college before or maybe had to defer, it's the easiest access point to get back involved in higher education. Yes, absolutely. I mean, access is one of the key tenets of the, of the community college. That's why you would see it's located in, um, in many communities. The fact that the costs are low and affordable um, really opens up access that we don't have you know, stringent emissions requirements. That means we're really putting access first based on this mission of being what's called an open access Well, let's, let, let's talk about that for a second because another thing that Tom Hanks raised in that op-ed in the New York Times was at the time that he went to community college, community college was free. You had to buy your books, but tuition was free. And I'm going to date myself because when I started right. at CRC, it was free. And since that time, while it is the, still the affordable choice in, higher, in the higher educational system in California, right, in the nation, it is not free anymore. Right. And um, the current Obama, the Obama administration has had a proposal to make community college free to up to two million people across the United States. Others have criticized that, saying that all it's going to do is flood the system mm -hmm. with a bunch of people who will take up space and not get anything done. you have a perspective on that? I, I do, I do. Completing a college degree, the number one barrier to doing that still is a financial barrier. Um, students not having the resource to be able to cover the cost that's associated with attending college. Now we have uh, enrollment fees, which is still, as I mentioned, um, the most affordable tuition or enrollment fee in, in the country, bar, bar none. I don't think there's another system that even comes close with being you know, $46 a unit to attend one of our, our institutions, but you still have other costs. So you have the cost of books. And which usually, 
outweighs it, sometimes. It does outweigh the cost of it in that's the right. moment, right? Um, and That'll so, be a second show with okay, you. Okay, we could do that. We'll follow <laughs> up on that. Uh, so fin finances is still the tremendous barrier. Now, we're extremely fortunate in California where we have the Board of Governors Raver, which is a financial aid um, packet that allows students to be able, if they are low income, where their fees are covered. And the majority of our students, so for instance, at Cosumnes River, close to 65% of our students are on what we call the BOG waiver, which means they do not have to cover the cost of those fees. Really? Yes, and so we're eliminating one aspect of that financial barrier. Um, and so in some ways, California is already mirroring much of what's been talked about uh, with the President uh, College Promise. Um, but what we need to really focus on in California is the other cost that I mentioned, the cost of books, right? So we have to develop ways not only to cover the cost of fees, which we have through the Board of Governors Raver, but also to really look at ways to mitigating the real cost it takes to go to these institutions. Because what we're finding is in order to cover that cost, students are having to work. So many of our students are working above 30 hours a week. And if you can imagine, you know, working more than 30 hours a week and trying to go to college, particularly full time, to go full yeah. time is going to be difficult. So what something has to give. And that affects your grades if you want to go into a four, and affects, four year. It affects student success. And so my hope is to be able to eliminate the financial barrier that may not be where a student is not going to have to incur any, any cost, which would be nice. But a student is able to make a decision that perhaps I do not have to work 30 hours a week to support myself while I'm in school. That let's, I could reduce that to 20 hours. Let's now. talk about Kasumnas. What is the role of your campus within the community that it serves and in the broader Los Rios system? Yes. So CRC, as, as we call it, serves the South Sacramento area and also the city of, of Elk Grove. Uh, it serves a tremendously diverse student population. Our role is to be uh, very active and engaged in the community to make sure that we are accessible and that we're offering the programs based on the needs of the communities that we're serving. Um, it's important within that community to, to forge strong partnerships with our K-12 um, because we know that we need to increase the college going rates, particularly in that region of, of Sacramento um, that could be considered low income um, area and we know the importance of education and help really changing the trajectory of not only students, but in the communities in which they live. So it's important that we provide the programs and access to those students. In order to do that, it's also quite critical that we build relationships with our high schools uh, so we could begin to reach those students in those communities before they graduate. Well, because the, the rap is, is that high schools are not sending adequately prepared students into any college setting. Yours. Uh, the CSUs, the, the UCs? There's a lot of factors that contribute to that. I'm not prepared to say today that you know, high schools are not preparing our students. Um, our high schools are doing tremendous jobs based on many of the obstacles that they're facing, right? Um, but we could partner with our high schools to make sure our students come prepared. Uh, so for instance, um, CRC has been doing work and what we're calling help align curriculum between high school and the college. So we have a faculty member that been, that's been working with um, Pacific High Schools and Elk Grove Unified to work with the teachers to talk about the expectation and level of competency a student would need to transition from high school to the college. So there's a misalignment on the curriculum that, that we need to align to make sure that students are getting taught what they need in high school in order to transition to college because there's a different content emphasis between high school and what we will offer, for instance, at, at CRC. We have to look in ways in which we place students into college level classes, that there's some work that we need to do on our end to help the level of preparation students coming out of high school. So we all own this, mm -hmm. not just high school. Now, not to get you in trouble with your colleagues at, at, at your brother and sister okay. institutions. Anytime you start with that way, I'm, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> okay, go ahead. But <laughs> yes. if I'm looking, at, at the Los Rio system, why am I choosing to attend T CRC other than yourself? Yes, in my unbiased <laughs> opinion. In your unbiased yeah, completely and scientific uh, opinion. opinion. I, I think everyone would make this claim, but I, I've been at CRC for the, since July 1, so I have, I have six months underneath my belt. 
and the level of commitment and dedication that our faculty and staff have to students being successful to me is unparalleled. The conversations that our faculty are having amongst themselves about what it is that they could do better inside of their classroom or how additional ways in which they can support students to ensure that they are successful. That CRC truly provides what I believe is an extremely nurturing environment. Even when you step foot on the campus, it really affirms that this is a place that you belong, that education and teaching and learning is about to happen. I haven't been to all of the colleges in our, in, our, in our district, but I have been to a lot of community colleges throughout the state. And I haven't experienced a college that had that type of feel, that when you step foot at the institution, you are transformed in an environment that is different than what you experienced in high school or another community, community college. I'll tell you something about you saying that. I, I, I'll vouch for that. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is that CRC, in my experience, has always been, there are a lot of students there, but it feels like a very intimate campus. Absolutely. And it's a place where it is that you really get to know your instructors and where they take the time. You might have lunch with them, you might have coffee with them, you, you, sit, down, uh, you sit down with them, you see them in the hallways. And so I can attest that. I wonder though whether or not that's one of the, the untold secrets mm -hmm. of the community college system, where there's a, 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 a greater level of intimacy and bond mm -hmm. between the faculty and the student than when you're in a seminar with 500 other people. Yeah, I, I know it is. Right. When a faculty member, when a person decides to teach at a community college, they are making a decision to teach. And you say that with and, emphasis. And I say that with as emphasis. As opposed to publish. As opposed to publish or to do research, right. Um, not to say anything against people who want to go that route, right, who want to teach at a research one institution where emphasis is on research and, and, and publishing. But in the community college, the emphasis is on teaching. So I mean that students are going to be engaged with their teachers, not, not a TA, a teacher's assistant, but they're really going to be engaged in the ex with the expert in that, in that field, that there's not a buffer between the student and the teacher either, that you have that direct interaction. So when you talked about you know, building a relationship, you know, it's interesting, there's a lot of research about what factors contribute to students being successful in community colleges. And one of the factors that consistently emerge as correlating to students graduating and higher, have higher grade point average and transferring is the formal in, and informal relationship that that student builds with their professor. Really? The faculty member. Mm -hmm. uh, so that relationship that you mentioned, that level of engagement is quite critical and it really is the secret sauce to me that makes community colleges work. It's obvious that you're very passionate about yes, what you absolutely. do. You were originally, when you were a student down at UC Riverside, you were going a different path into politics and government. What turned you on about getting into higher education and coming into the community college system? Yeah, I thought one period of time that I wanted to be a city manager, but as I worked my way through my undergraduate education, um, my life was being impacted by those who worked at the university. So the advisor for the club, my psychology professor, my, my African studies professor, all those people played a key role in shaping my own identity and how I felt about myself and my perspective on the world. And once I realized that my worldview was being shaped based on the care of adults that worked in higher education, then I made the decision at that point in time that I wanted to have that same impact and that I didn't know what capacity that I wanted to work in in higher education. I just knew that this was the environment in which I felt that I could be of best use and service uh, to my community. And, and in all the things that you do, because you're, you have a, a, a big corporation essentially mm -hmm. that you run, budget in excess of $30 million a year. How is it that, that you get to still have those touch points with the students that sort of brought you into this in the first place. I mean, I think it's important. I'm, I'm very conscious and cognizant that I need to do that. Um, I was on an airplane traveling, and I forget where I was traveling to, but there was a commercial that, that came on, and, 
in the commercial was, um, and I forget what product they were saying, but there was a line out of there that said the most dangerous place to make a decision is in your office. <laughs> really? And that just really resonated with me. Um, and so to me, I have to make a point that there's a lot to do as president. There's a lot of administrative stuff that has to get done. But you cannot make those decisions in isolation to how it's going to impact the students in which you're serving. And in order for that impact to be firmly impressed upon me when I make those decisions, I have to be able to make sure that I get out, touch, to see, to talk with students. So I make it a point to sit in on classes. You know, I walk the quad, I go into the cafeteria to talk with students because I need that. I need to be constantly reminded of the reason why I do what it is that I do, and they are the reason uh, for that. So I need to be able to hear their concerns, to see what's working for them, what's not working for them. I need to hear their dreams, their goals, and their aspirations. What's on cool. their minds these days? As you talk to the students, mm -hmm. and if they were in front of policymakers over at the Capitol, mm -hmm. who end up making the budget decisions and the policy decisions, what would you hope that they would tell them yeah. that they say to you? Students, I think number one concern is continuing. They want to make sure that they have access to the courses they need in order to complete their Is that degree. a problem for you guys? No, it's better. I mean, mm -hmm. community colleges, since the recessions, are definitely bouncing back. We're experiencing some of the best budgets that we've had in recent, in recent memory. So courses are, are coming back. Um, but I think there's, you know, there, there's, there's still some hangover, so to speak. Uh, from the time in which students didn't have access to courses. So that's still something that's very much on the consciousness of students. So they still are concerned about that. They want to make sure that they have the support that they need. Uh, students, believe it or not, are looking for strong guidance. Really? That students, are in many ways, want to be told what it is that they want, that they need to do in order to complete. And we seem to think that students want a tremendous, young people want a tremendous about a amount of freedom. They want to make their own choices and their decisions. And that is somewhat true. But they're coming out of a system in K-12 where the courses and classes are structured. Um, they know when the homework assignment is due, when it's, when it's late, then get to this point where you have all this, these choices and selections, and they often get lost in that. Um, where students are saying now that they want a a more structured student experience. That if we know what it is that they need to do, the classes that they need to take, the services that they need to take advantage of in order to be successful, then why is that optional? Mm -hmm. Why do we give them a choice to do it? What they pretty much are saying is, you know, we don't do optional. That if we know, if it's important for me to do it, then you will make me do it. <laughs> I mean, that's the signal and we, we don't, make them do it or give them a choice, then they often don't believe then it's critical. You know, that, that raises a, another question about linkages and efficiency. The other uh, claim to fame that is increasingly talked about across the country is the use of the community college system as a means to link the needs of employers to the current or the emerging workforce. How is it that CRC works with employers in order to make sure that the students that they're turning out, your graduates, whether they're coming through a two-year program or a certificated program, are what employers not only need but are willing to pay a good wage to. Yes, that's extremely important. Uh, CRC, we have great career and technical programs and each of those programs have industry advisory groups. So these are folks that are actually business owners, um, those who, who hire employers um, sit on these advisory groups and they continue to look at the curriculum that's being offered by these programs to make sure it is matching the needs of industry. And if it's not matching those needs, then we, it's incumbent upon us to make those adjustments to make sure that the content that our students are learning would allow them to be competent is, to go into that Is workforce. there a particular program that you're most excited about where you're doing this right now? You know, you know I can't just mention one. <laughs> so all all, all we have time for yes, is one. All of our programs are, are, are great. Uh, our welding program, I uh, had a chance to tour their, their facility maybe a month ago and the work that they're doing with our, with our students in that area. We recently have a partnership with, with Siemens. And when you talk about the connection between industry 
and our students to make sure that they're getting the competencies they need in order to work. That's a direct mm -hmm. link with one of our with our program with with welding. Our construction program is 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 great. Um, our students partner with Habitat for Humanity. They actually go out and build houses. So not only are they getting the practical experience within their trade, but they're also learning what it means to give back and to be of service, to take advantage of those. So those are just two that really stands out. And I think that we will leave it there. Dr. Bush, thank you. And as a, as a graduate of CRC, yes. uh, uh, keep the flame Absolutely. burning bright. I will, I will do. Thank All you right. so much. And that's our show. Thanks to our guest and thanks to you for watching Studio Sacramento. I'm Scott Syfax. See you next time right here on KVIE. Five Star Bank community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. All episodes of Studio Sacramento, along with other KVIE programs, are available to watch online at kvie.org video.